What's going on, you wonderful weirdos out there in the ether of the internet across space and time? I'm Pokan Joe, and as always, you're pretty cool for swinging by. So this is a haul video slash review video quickly before Blaster Stash It. If you'd like a deeper review on some of these comic books right here on YouTube, you can catch Blaster Stash at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where myself, Huey's Comics, and we're bringing back Spectacular Spider Grandpa. Apparently, he's had some time off, and he's read some comic books, and he's going to be in there as well. Please join us in the chat, interact with us, so we can talk comics and all the great stuff in it. So, um... I went to a comic book shop and I bought comic books. I actually didn't have any mail to me this week because I was out of town, as you saw in my last video where I was in Lynchburg. Awkward sips of coffee still. Um, yeah, so I was in Lynchburg. It's kind of hard up there to get comic books. So I got my comic books a little late. Didn't see any reason to order them because then they would be coming in later and I wouldn't have time to do this video before a blaster stash it. So, so. Light load this week, but lots of good stuff. Oh my lord, did we have some good comic books this week. Let's go ahead and talk about this beautiful Scotty Young. So, my wife likes me now, because I found a Scotty Young cover for her. This is some of her favorite covers. She loves them, that's why we went with the Scotty Young cover. So, what's the story? Well, the story is the same thing that it's been. Um, although, uh, this one did seem kind of cheated. There's only about, maybe... 12 pages worth of story in here, and the rest of us is stuff in the back, so thanks for that. Um, yeah, great beautiful art in it, great splash pages as you can see, but where's the story going? Basically the whole thing's been nothing more than a, uh, a uh, from the perspective of a reporter that had to report all the older comic book stories that happened, you know, with Namor, Captain America, The Torch, and then in this one we get a brief glance at the X-Men, Fantastic Four on a splash page. That's about it. Um, this this really, I, at first I really liked the series, and then they gave me this, and I just felt cheated out of it. So, yeah, not happy about that. So let's go on something with some meaning. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man number 26, and this is why... This is the comic book I'm always telling people need to be able to read. This actually is a lot deeper than it is on the surface. This entire issue is nothing about motivations and the different motivations that people have. Rather it be a substance thing like Kingpin in this looking for a particular box with something in it of a mystery that we don't know. We do know that Boomerang has it. Boomerang has a motivation to be the constant cool guy, if you will. The, the guy in the no, the guy in the story, that guy. Uh, Peter Parker's motivations to protect friends and family. Aunt May's motivations to help people in need no matter what. A group of females' motivations to break through a ceiling, uh, to be more than just the sidekick or lackey of a situation. The entire thing is nothing more than people's motivations and what they're willing to do to get to them, which ultimately defines them as good or bad guys, depending on society's rules and laws. So, yeah. This is deeper than it looks. This is great stuff. I highly recommend you read it. Um, basically, it's just like I said. I, I pretty much gave you the review there. Kingpin's looking for something. Boomerang has it. Boomerang's hanging out with Peter Parker because they're friends now for some reason. Uh, they go help Aunt May and a friend at a homeless shelter. Uh, we get a quick flash of our favorite villain. I really like this villain. Um... We also get the female Shocker version. She teams up with a group of female villains because they want to have their own crime syndicate and do their own thing. That is fine. Girl power, as long as all the villains were actually made up by men. So I... Sorry. Um, <laughs> various motivations. So the next issue... We're going to have a lot going on because that's what we're left with. By the way, beautiful splash page. Good job. So, yeah, good stuff. Amazing Spider-Man, number 26. I highly recommend it. Um, next, I uh, kind of have to go out on and reach on this one to get deep with it. But it's Arachnite and it's the time or the secret warps uh, thing. All right, so what we're finding out in all these issues is that apparently... The multiverse is overlapping on itself. So I'll go ahead and spoil the ending for you right now. At the end of the first story in here, they're all where they were two people. Now they're all three to four people because they're 
the universe is overlapping on itself. We can get really weird with that. I tried to look it up some of this stuff online, where some of this is somewhat based in theory, the multiverse and, and how it could happen. Um, truth is, I got a little lost in it. It's, it's a little over my head, so I'm not going to try to relay that to you. However, I will say it is very interesting the way the Erechnite in here has already, what is it, four voices in his head. All right, what you think about this now? We got scientific Peter Parker, then we got business Peter Parker, which technically should be considered personalities, not really different people, but we'll go with it. And then we got the Iraq Knight totem kind of thing that Moon Knight has in him, right? We have that character, that the ancient Naboo great Arachnid. And then we got Moon Knight himself, who's kind of insane and wants to destroy everything. We got a lot of that going on. And then at the end of this book, like, it collapses, and now we have Captain America and Doctor Strange, and then all those characters. Ooh, it's, it's a lot. It's, it's a lot to follow. Um, but I like the way that they're doing it. I love the way they're collapsing everybody. And I love that they're bringing back these older characters and just kind of meshing them up into other ones. So I'll just run down the rundown real quick of what you get in this. Um, the very first story, uh, we have people trying to stop this thing, and apparently one of the Earths have to die. Uh, or one of the Earths has to be destroyed. We've seen this in comic book continuity before, so it only makes sense it would be in this world. Uh, bad guys get stopped, right? We get all that. Classic battles, great art in this, but I'm skipping to the end. They stop them. They want to know why. So we leave off with all of our heroes. By the way, even Speed Weasel gets the Starband powers, which is really kind of cool in that. If you don't know who Starband is, uh, it's a minor character that never really took off. really. But now that it's in Speed Weasel, it's actually kind of cool. So we're moving on, and everything collapses on each other. Now we have only three heroes. Yeah. So in this one, the mix-ups are uh, Spider-Man and, of course, Moon Knight. Uh, we also get <laughs> Ulysses Claw and the Orb. Uh, we get Blue Eagle and Codename Spitfire. That was actually pretty cool. It was like, um, what's his name? Codename Eagle, and he shoots all these missiles. That was kind of cool. Really updated that question. Or not that question, but that character. We get Abomination and Mastodon. We get Weezer, classic superhero, with Blur, another speedster. Um, I didn't like the name of that character. They named him Blurrer. Blurrer? Really? Okay. Uh, Hyperion and Starband, Dr. Spectrum and Justice, uh, Power Justice, and Stephanie somebody. Harrington. I don't know who that is. Uh, Nighthawk and Night Mask, and of course that one was Hawk Mask. So I, I really like the way they're selecting their characters and kind of mixing them up and just kind of letting us know because some of these characters can be kind of obscure. Uh, after that, we move into another story with this great, 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 great story of the Terrific Two. I really like the linguistics that they're using in this. It's very old school where you have a pronunciation of something being happened over and over again. Uh, uh, Peter Piper picked a pack of peppers, that kind of stuff. Um, they do that a lot in here to kind of give it that old school Fantastic Four feel. Um, and it's just really awesome. And then you get great splash pages. And then we start to find out that sometimes having all these personalities in you can really kind of disrupt things. And it makes more sense for superheroes to meet when maybe one of them has more personalities in it. Classic superhero trope. Two heroes go that don't know each other, go fight a villain, right? And then what happens? They think they're the, each one of them is the villain before they actually meet the villain. So they fight, right? And this, they kind of did that. But they made it the fault of the Arachnite and all that stuff going in there. And Stretchy Reed Richards slash Johnny, uh, yeah, it can get confusing, kind of finds out through his, you know, thought. He's smart. He's like, something's not right here. His voice is off. His fighting styles has become different. It, it's weird. Wonderfully weird. It, it really is. I highly recommend it if you're not reading any of those. All of them have been great. Uh, moving on. Funeral Fire. Uh, this is good. I did not know this character. Also, for all you, I don't know, 
comic book people out there that are always worried about appearances, reappearances, and that kind of stuff, there is actually a quick sighting of Donna Dargo in this comic book. If you don't know who she is, she was part of the Life Foundation, and she was also a symbiote host at one point, and we know that she's missing in this continuity. How do you know we know this? Well, I always look deep into the comic book, and right there, I know, I know, just let it focus in for a second. Right there on the milk carton, it has her name. Just to double check that it was her, double checked uh, Wicca fandom for Marvel. Um, that's where I got the information from. But anyway, that's a very minor thing. I wanted to get that out to you guys. So what's going on in this? Uh, well, if you don't know our hero, uh, she used to be a symbiote host and worked with Agent of Venom. So now you kind of know this time story that we're talking about here. Eventually, she gets the symbiote ripped from her. What does her life look like afterwards? Well, she's been cursed by hell and can summon demons. Ta-da! It sounds like they're just trying to hang on to a character and reinvent it at the same time. And to some degree you would be right, but they did it in such a cool way with such great art that I don't even care. Um, but she's also having some problems. She's having some hallucinations and uh, seeing things that maybe aren't there with the old Venom suit. Uh, and then that is what ends up creating these great splash pages right here with the beautiful artwork. Um, and of course, this affects her friends and family and everybody else. I think, if I can go so bold, I think they're trying to like attach it to like a PTSD syndrome, I guess. Um, but it just kind of calling it that just comes off weird in the comic book. Take a look, and it's just uh, I don't know. Backward sips of coffee. All right. So moving on, uh, we don't really get her powers until. Carnage starts to show up, and of course, they're keeping everything horrifying. Yes, that is a person splitting open um, with this kind of horrifying thing. She can't tell if it's reality or if it's serious at this point, but eventually she comes to realize that, yeah, this is happening. And then we get this splash page of her bringing forth these demons. Some of this stuff's kind of hinky in here, but a lot of it's good, too. Uh, the majority of it's good. I'm really liking this carnage that's coming out of here. Uh, and we find out that there are zero cares to be given because carnage is carnage and he's going to drop these bodies. And even these monsters from hell can't even stop him. Um, and it is very powerful. And as a safeguard, she automatically gets sent to hell whenever she gets hurt, which is all right. Uh, because she shows up in New York where she's going to be looking for Eddie Brock, of course, so they can team up against Carnage. And then we just get this weird sadistic feel about ah, it is just awesome. I can't wait for Carnage. They've really been promoting this very well, but this is a good read. You may want to check it out. I highly recommend putting it on your list if you didn't pick it up this last week. Next, we got Gardens of the Galaxy. This was a slow burn here uh, to get to anything good. Um, we have the Church of the United Truth. Is that their name? It doesn't matter. We have a religious fraction from the future, no less. Yes, they've been hanging around in current continuity, but now we have the future one coming, and their conversion of everybody is absolute. It's death or, or conversion, right? That, that's their deal. Very, very, very weirdly. Um, Nova Corps shows up. They're like, what's going on here? They end up getting dropped. The church ends up dropping them bodies through some sort of mystical thing. We'll just call it a thing at this point because we don't really know what it is. Well, on the way there, uh, Peter's hooking up with Gamora. And I mean hooking up, like straight up at it, right? Groot wants everybody to know that nobody cares. Right? So there, you, you're sped up there. Uh, they get a message from Peter Quill's dad, uh, who's not ego. So we're not following movie continuity at this point. We're following actual comic book continuity. And uh, apparently dad's freaking out because of the church. And then it, it, it shuts off him dramatically, of course. This is the same father that has screwed over Peter Quill several times, but son's going to love his daddy, right? So they jump in the ship. They're shooting out there to go find out what's going on. They get captured. Long story short, the whole time it was Peter Quill's dad. Uh, he's the, like, priest slash villainy guy. Yeah. So, yep, screws him over again. And then we get probably one of the coolest things ever. 
all we have left is <laughs> oh by the way the people that went along to, if you don't know who the new Gal guards of the galaxy are it's Gamora Lockjaw for some reason I I don't know how I feel about that it, like don't get me wrong I like bulldogs I think they're cool but his little antenna thing and being able to teleport just seems like lazy writing to me uh Moon Dragon, Moon Dragon's girlfriend, I always forget her name, Eternia or something like that. I, I don't know. Beta Ray Bill, and of course Peter Quill, Groot, and, but we have no Rocket through this whole story. Rocket's been missing, proposed dead. Um, so what happens, the only two people that survived this entire thing were Peter Quill, who's being held by his dad right now, uh, Lockjaw, Gamora, Beta Ray Bill, and Eternia, we'll just call it Eternia for now, have been converted into the religion, and Moon Dragon and Groot were made to stay on the ship. They were able to escape, and now we find them in a place, a hobbled little hole in the middle of nowhere. And who else is it? They're talking about all their problems. They're crying it out, and we get a very broken-looking rat looking uh, rocket coming back that's pretty interesting I like it the banter between all of them is great uh, but definitely I don't know where this story's gonna go it just seems kinda slow to me the pacing's just off I don't know uh, next the book that everybody's been talking about there it is yes House of X uh, yes this is where we're dealing with Professor X with his chrome dome on um, I don't know how I feel about this one. So there's this plant, and then there's ambassadors, and then there's stuff, and then there's more stuff. Right? Not a very good review, is it? Well, the story's kind of weird, and it's kind of all over the place. I'm not going to say I hated it, but I'm not buying the possible timeline that we're in or alternate, di or alternate dimension that we're dealing with. I'm not really sure what they are. Um... We do know that this plant, Korra, is all over the world. Uh, they make teleports to bring them back to their New Jerusalem type of place. Uh, this is dealing with borders. Yeah, I'm going to go with this is dealing with borders. We do get Jean Grey and her Miss Marvel outfit, which I, I do miss that. That was very unfunctional, but still nice. Um... And we get a lot of other stories that are just kind of in and out of everywhere. I'm not really sure where this is going. I will be picking up issue two, however, because I am interested in some of the stories in it. But there's, it seems like there's supposed to be three stories in this, but two of them become connected. I, I kind of got lost in it. It's a lot going on in it, but we'll get deeper into it later. Moving on to DC. I actually liked a lot of stuff this DC. It was great, mostly because... Uh, yeah, King's Book of Batman didn't come out, so that was good. So therefore, everything else is going to be all right. Um, of course, I got Batman, Curse of the White Knight. I really like it in Batman continuity where they kind of go back to the Wayne history, right? And in this one, they go back to the 1600s, uh, 1682, I believe, uh, where Arkham was actually Arkham Fort, and a Wayne is fighting a vampire, and both of them end up with ties all the way into their future. And... It's kind of interesting the way that this plays out um, because we get that quick story and then we get that story that's showed in every comic book out there about how uh, the Joker escaped Arkham, right? They, they actually re-put that in here. You put it in so many comic books, I didn't think it was necessary, but whatever. Got to eat up space somehow. We know Alfred's dead. We get a very long note from Alfred and we also get the book. Uh, that kind of explains the history. But the pages are so brittle in it that we got to give it some time to recover because they're restoring it. Uh, moving on, we get some detective work, some stuff we haven't had in a while in a good Batman story. We get the Joker plotting. That was really great. We get some characters. We get stuff. We get interaction with Nightwing and Batgirl. Good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. And then we see our boy, who's finding out that we can only assume that he has cancer. He hallucinates. He's got some issues. But he's the connection to the past and the ways. Uh, also, there's a minor story about a vampire. That's the past story. It turned out it was actually a vampire. But apparently, it got changed into a poem in the future. That was pretty cool. 
that connection just to verify it. But then ultimately we find out what Joker was looking for, which was a sword, and it was a particular sword. And then we find out one of my favorite characters ever comes back, and it's Azazel. Or Azrael. Uh, it's kind of, I know people are going to argue about which way that's pronounced, but I would have looked it up. Yes, I looked up the name. And it is actually a name from most Abrahamic face of the Angel of Destruction and Renewal at the same time. So I'm going to go with Azrael on this one, guys. By all means, argue it if you want, but I checked it out and that's what it came up with. But, uh, which is fitting to this character. Right? Because we know this guy. This guy sets things on fire. He burns things down. He's not really a good guy. Well, he thinks he's a good guy doing bad things. Right? And that always leads to great savagery and very loose morals. Uh, moving on. Another, okay, Detective Comics 1008. Uh, again, another slow story on this one, but this is a classic Batman story. So for all you people out there that say just write comic books the way they used to be written, there it is. Did you even bother buying it? Did you even know? That's what I gotta ask because it's what you asked for. This is a classic Batman and Joker story. It even takes place in a theme park. Um, so basically what do we got going on here? Joker kidnaps a bunch of people. We're assuming he kidnapped them, right? Sets up a theme park. He's got everybody wearing a necklace that throws uh, laughing or Joker gas in him, you know, that stuff that makes you smile and die. And Batman shows up, and Batman does his usual thing. He lets the Joker run him around in circles, try different rides, and plays his little game until he figures out, through detective work, that doesn't really get explained. It's kind of weird. Um, where the device is that can shut everything off, yada, yada, yada. We get it. Great stuff. Batman puts a little tracking device on him as he's getting away with balloons. How classic is that? And, of course, it attracts bats, and they drive through. And, of course, Joker falls. Does he die? Does he not die? Did the water kill him? Did he drown? We don't know because it's a classic Joker getaway. We're left hanging. But that's not really the important part of this. Again, at the end, we get another one of the little drone drones from the Doom thing, from Apex Luther, and he shows up to talk to Dr. Freeze about a possible deal. Dun, dun, dun. By the way, great rendering of Dr. Freeze. That was pretty good. So, again, classic story, great stuff going on there. Really enjoyed it. If you just miss comic books the way they used to be written, that's a great example of one. Next, Freedom Fighters. This is interesting. I'm a huge fan of Freedom Fighters. It's patriotic. They say the cheesiest stuff in there that just gives me goosebumps because it's so America. It is awesome. I love this stuff. Um, this is great comic book storytelling in here. Um, we find out, uh, well, if you forgot, um, Overman or Uberman uh, already kind of kicked the crap out of her hero. So they had to escape. They're hiding in a basement right now of an African-American family. And it's very important that they're African-American. Because if you remember, it's under Nazi rule now in this universe. And they were actually slaves in a factory and worked to get so many credits to be free. But they're not really free. They're poor. Like, super poor. Like, a can of beans they have to split between four or five people poor. Right? So life kind of sucks for them because they're not the norm. Okay. We also got sadistic experiments. The human bomb has been captured and he's being tortured by Adolf Hitler the third. That actually kind of makes sense. I would buy off on that. Um, moving on. Nazis bad. Dad and we'll see. The dad that's harboring the family is scared and nervous, and rightfully so, because he he works so hard to become free, and he's obviously breaking the law keeping these people here, and we find out that they have a daughter that is still in the factories working, and he just wants his daughter back. So what do you think he does? That's one of them hard choices, right? Like, this, I love the way the story breaks out the choice that people have to make by weighing the, both ends of it. He wants his daughter back. He wants his daughter protected. He doesn't want to screw over the heroes. 
But then again, he was really going to do much for him, but make his life worse. He got with his daughter back. So what do you think he does? He does that. He gets in touch with the Razzis and makes a deal with Plastic Man. Plastic Man shows up with about four other Plastic Men. That's very key to know. Because as they go in there to fight them, only three go in to fight. One, two, three. So... They're sitting in there fighting them, and Captain America, or, or Captain America, might as well be, Uncle Sam kind of, he's still kind of weak. And remember, our Uncle Sam doesn't eat, he's the embodiment of the American spirit. And then we get, uh, of course, Plastic Man went ahead and killed the two people that were harboring them anyway. And she's reminded by some very simple words. Uh, I'm always glad to say to die for a cause. Give me liberty. Or give me death. And that's the food that our Uncle Sam needs to tear up some Roxy's. That was kind of cool. That, I love that. That's the part that gave me the goosebumps, by the way. So Phantom Lady has to figure out some way to teleport them. But remember, she can only teleport as far as she can see. But she can teleport Plastic Man anywhere. So she teleports the heads of Plastic Man into space. Three of them. Do, do, do. So what happens after that? Well, we find out at the end that Plastic Man has transformed himself into one of our freedom fighters. And which one was it? Well, it's Doll Girl. Doll Woman? Doll Girl? I'm not sure what she likes to be called in this. And we know this because Plastic Man's holding her at the end Why they walk away with one. So that was very interesting. We got a traitor in the mist. They're going to go to the factories. They're going to bring the fight to the Nazis, or Ratsies as they call them, which I love that concept. Great story. Really like it, but I'm not going to sit here and say it's for everybody. It's kind of hokey. It's kind of cheesy. So if you're not into that, probably don't want to pick it up. But if every now and then you just want some America in you, definitely pick up that book. All right, moving on. Justice League Dark, this was a filler issue. That's all this was. All we got out of this was straight up origins. And it literally says that. It says secrets and origins. Uh, we get Naboo or Dr. Faith. How that whole thing happened. Classic Golden Age story too, by the way. Uh, we also get um, Wonder Woman trying to convince uh, Dr. Fate or his non-persona of Dr. Fate uh, to join Justice League Dark. And he's kind of hesitant. He's kind of back and forth about it. He does not want to put on the Dr. Fate helmet when he does it. Yada, yada, yada. Um, doesn't really work out very well. But he ultimately says yes as long as he gets to keep his apprentice with him. And, of course, we get Nebu still being alive. Uh, the next secret origin story we go on to, believe it or not, and I'm surprised they went this route, we get John Constantine. He's back. He's smoking with cigarettes, being all gangster. And we kind of get his whole story that we've seen and heard a thousand times. Um, so, yeah. And then, of course, at the end, we get another um, quick drone from doom going to deliver a message to somebody and in this one it is dun, dun, dun. she's been in the shadows the entire time of justice league dark uh except for maybe a couple of visits let's see what happens with that and that's it so this was kind of a honestly if it wasn't for this cover right here i probably if i would have read it in the shot before i probably wouldn't even picked it up to be quite honest uh what else did we get we got some independence now Man, have you been picking this up? By the way, if you've been missing this, I I don't know what to tell you. Like, I, I, bro, do you even read comic books? Middle West has been great. Yes, it's kind of a childish story, but it's about a young child on a quest for meaning and purpose and the people he meets along the way and the relationships he ultimately evolves from them. How great is that? It's a really touching heart story, and this one's no different. He ends a quest to go on a quest on this one, which sometimes happens in storybook telling. Of course, I have to bring up like The Hobbit. You know, it's like one walk after another in each one of the books. It's like, I walk here, I walk there. Same thing kind of happens in this one. It's a classic trope. Um, he meets up with these, and we'll just go ahead and say the natives of the country. Does that sound fair? Because that's technically what they're what they are. Meets up with the natives of this country. They recognize 
his <laughs> mysterious markings on his chest, and they know what they what it is. So they do like any good savages do. I, I, maybe that's a little harsh, but they take them back to their people on, of course, on extra large turkeys because. Why not? It's a great universe. We also find out that his little friend from the carnival is going to come looking for him, so there's going to be a meetup at some point, probably just in the nick of time. But that's, we're going way too far. So we take him to the elders. The elders tell him what he's got. They're like, oh, you got to go to the magical land of the mystical beast of your spiritual animal, whatever the other is in their universe. It doesn't really matter. It is spiritual. We also find out that there's more to the fox than we were led to believe. And we know this because when we go to the spiritual land, which is weird because it's the, the, somebody has to smoke something. To take them away to this horrible nightmare. Talking about a bad trip. Uh, so this is the mystical beast that their faith is founded around. We just throw that in there. And apparently he doesn't like a lot of lip from the fox. And tells him that he has to go on yet another journey. And that can be kind of weird. So he's got to go to a lake. And he's got to tell the crosser of the lake. Does that story sound familiar anywhere? Somebody give somebody some coins to cross a river, river sticks. It's kind of interesting. You see where the motivation is. Then he's got to go through the desolate desert lands. Again, another great storytelling trope. Through some mystical woods to a border of ice and snow where he has to leave his fox. And then we find out who he was supposed to go see. And it's his grandfather. They explained everything. Literally says, hello, grandson, the moment a few feet into it. Or we're being led to believe a few feet into it. We're not sure. Um, wow. And then, of course, we get our next cover. So now we find out that this is a generational thing, that this is not just a father and son thing, that there, there's something else connected to it. We're going to find out more. I love the pacing of this story. It's not too much at one time. And it keeps wanting you want more. It gives you just enough to satisfy that story and then cut you off. I think they've done a great job on this comic book, both art-wise and storytelling-wise. Again, if you're not picking it up, Middle West, I don't know what to tell you. It's like something's wrong with you. You, you get it through your head. Go get it. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, seriously, go get it. All right, so next, we finish our first arc of Dark Red. Uh, we battle Nazi, half or naked Nazi women in here. And then we beat up every all the Nazi vampires. I've been on a Nazi kick lately. I don't know what that's about. Well, not a Nazi kick, but, but beating Nazis. That sounds better. All right, so <laughs> we get that done. Uh, our redneck finds his faith again and blesses an entire pool of water. It's kind of weird that the vampire had to kind of explain to him how his faith works. I don't know how I feel about that. That was kind of weird, but whatever. We'll go with it. Um, and he ultimately ends up converting his friend. And then a whole new chapter begins. That's legit. Oh, by the way, she kills mostly the vampire there. When she turns into a vampire, she kills the naked pretty one that you see on all the covers. Uh, then we are wake up and we're back at the convenience store. We're in a trunk. And we're going to go to Chicago. However, not all of us are going to go. He sends his friend to Chicago to meet up with some other vampires that own a nightclub. But apparently that's going to stir some problems too. So yeah, good story. Short story in this one. Not a whole, whole lot going on. Two major points in it. And that was covered pretty quickly. So yeah, this week has been great. Also, I have been watched The Boys. My wife, my poor wife who sits over here. You've probably been hearing her cough. I have been making her sit here and watch this show with me. I have just been ecstatic about the boys on Amazon Prime. Listen to me. If you can get a free trial of Amazon Prime, you get on there right now and you binge watch. It's only eight episodes in this season. It's a great, great watch. It is a satirical look at superheroes and their place in our universe and what happens when we've had enough of the crap and how much other people will rely on them. It is a great, just horrifying, flip it on its head and make it the worst case scenario ever. Where even the heroes need villains, so they make villains. Like, it's ridiculous. 
ridiculously good. And I find it very relatable. <laughs> so definitely check that out. Check out the first two issues. Um, how does it coincide with the comic book? Um, it it's on point. I mean, they have to change some things here and there just to make it more uh, to make it make more sense in a, in a medium like television. Uh, but still, a lot of good stuff. And they did a horrible cliffhanger. They did one of those cliffhangers where technically the good guy, bad guy won, but everybody's a good guy, bad guy. It it is great. You gotta watch it. It is fun. It's amusing. It's witty banter. Um, yeah, definitely check that out. Other than that, don't forget about Blaster Stash at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on YouTube. Myself and the rest of the crew, well, not all the crew, but myself, Hueeks Comics, and Spectacular Spider Grandpa, we're going to review some comic books. We're going to have some conversation. You'll have a chat room where you can partake in all your suggestions. If you watch this video, you know what I'm bringing. So if you disagree with something, let us know there. Give us your takes on the view. Interact with us. It's always a great time. Folks, I promised my wife we would go do some stuff today. I don't know what we're going to do. It's kind of hot outside. I'm going to try to tuck her out of it. But until then, I'll see you tomorrow. Also, don't forget to check me out on Twitch. I will be going on Twitch tomorrow uh, to also do a comic book unboxing. And, well, comic book unboxing and who knows, probably another review on these comic books. If you want to meet me on Twitch, it's Pokanjo, one word. Definitely check me out. Uh, we'll probably go live around noonish. Noonish? You guys good with noon? We'll probably go live around noon time. So definitely check me out. Hit the subscribe and let's see. Let's meet up and talk about comic books. Definitely. Uh, always happy to read your comments on air and have a discussion with you. And we can get deep in these comic books. If that's something you're into. Why Twitch? Because uh, it's super easy to go live on Twitch. It's like uh, Hangouts is going away and I don't know how to use OBS. There, there's the answer. All right, guys. I got to get out of here. Talk to you later. Bye.